We're introduced to the Joker at the very beginning of the film. An explosive bank heist sequence illustrates just how much of a mastermind this version of the Joker is. This self-contained sequence is actually considered to be more of a prologue to the actual film. In fact, the bank heist sequence was shown in full in select IMAX theaters ahead of the IMAX screenings of I Am Legend, which opened in December of 2007. We then cut to a sequence where the Scarecrow, returning from Batman Begins, is still at large in Gotham as a drug dealer selling his fear-inducing toxins to fellow crime lords. I told you my compound would take you places. I never said there'd be places you wanted to go. He and his goons are soon thwarted by a group of copycat Batmen, average Joes who were inspired by Batman to take the law into their own hands. The real Batman soon makes a grand entrance and puts an end to the conflict. As the film progresses, we see Batman, along with now police Lieutenant James Gordon and newly elected DA Harvey Dent, almost completely cleaning out the organized crime rings in Gotham City. Meanwhile, a terrifying psychopath who wears clown makeup is also making his way up the crime ladder. The Joker begins using threats and making deals to eventually off any competition that may get in his way. You're crazy. I'm not. No, I'm not. Initially, he reveals to the mob kingpins that he wants to completely do away with the Batman and get him out of the way. But as the Joker begins gaining power in Gotham City, it starts to become more apparent that all he wants to do is drive the city into self-destructive chaos and completely break the spirits of both Batman and Harvey Dent. If Batman finally snaps, he'll break his one rule by killing the Joker, thus the Joker's scheme would have all fallen into place. However, the moral dilemma reveals itself as Batman must find an unorthodox way of stopping the Joker without becoming a killer like the Joker himself. Being a Batman fan before I could even talk, I grew up loving almost any incarnation of the character no matter how different one was from the other. That's kind of what made it fun to be a Batman fan. Whether it's a bright, fun-loving, swingin' 60s cape crusader, a foreboding, angst-ridden, ass-kicking dark knight, or something in between, there was something special about each version. Having grown up with the 1989 Tim Burton film, that was the definitive Batman movie for many years, despite its flaws. Once I got a little older, though, I'd always wanted to see what a Batman movie that stayed really true to the comic book origins would have been like. Batman Begins finally made that possible, while also bringing a unique look inside the mind of the character and told a part of the Batman origin story that was never really explored in the comic books. So what do you think? Does it come in black? But that film, too, had its flaws. But it didn't matter, because after the shit fest that was Batman and Robin, and all the years the franchise lay dormant, it was just awesome to see Batman in a theater again. And to me, Batman Begins was simply a good start for something even better to come later. And inevitably, being Batman's arch nemesis for so many years, the Joker had to be thrown into the mix at some point. So when talks of the Batman Begins sequel, um, began, that's really when I was starting to get excited. I hadn't been this hyped for a movie since Star Wars Episode I back in 1999, but unlike Episode I, The Dark Knight actually exceeded my expectations, becoming what I feel is one of the greatest and most solid movies I'd ever seen. Hmm. But I know my opinions are a little biased. Everything about the film's characters are both iconic and fresh at the same time, which I can imagine is not easy when dealing with characters that have been around for 70 years. But what makes it work is that Christopher Nolan made it a point early on to adapt the essence of the characters the way they were initially conceived 70 years ago, tapping into their fundamental characteristics and motivations. Now that's how you adapt a comic book.